Welcome back guys. In this video, we have to state the domain for each rational function below. So we've got three rational functions, we've got to state the domain. Notice that this question is a little bit different than the previous ones. Before, they were asking us to simplify and state the restrictions. Here we have to state the domain. So we don't have to necessarily simplify these, but we do have to get the domain. And to get the domain, we have to get the restrictions. So we have to cover those first two steps that we covered in the previous videos, where we have to factor both the numerator and denominator, and then get the restrictions from the denominator. Actually, in fact, we don't even have to factor the um, numerator, but we can do it um, just as practice anyway. When they ask you for the domain for these types of functions, basically the domain is always gonna be in this format. It's always gonna be x can be anything, but x cannot equal v restrictions. That's the format that the domain is always going to be for a rational function. So the domain here is actually, let's write it down here. So the domain is xcr, but what can x not equal to? Well, we have to factor, so the numerator factors to x plus two, x minus two, and then the denominator, we can't factor that any further. And then notice that x cannot equal two because that would make the denominator equal to zero. That's the restriction. And we don't have to simplify this. The x minus twos would cancel out. But uh, this here is the domain. XCR and then X cannot equal the restriction. The only restriction is two because there's only one factor in the denominator, right? Moving on to number two, let's factor here. So we could take out a three left with X minus five. And then from these, uh, from the denominator, we could take out an X. We'd be left with X squared minus six X plus five. And then we could factor the denominator even further. Be left with x, x minus five, x minus one, right? And then from here, we could tell what the restrictions are. So we could find the domain. Basically, x can be anything as long as it's not what? Zero, one, and five. And usually these, if you list them out, if there's multiple restrictions, you got to list them in, um, in order from lowest to highest. So I put zero, one, and five. So that's the domain for this rational function. And then number three, we got x over x squared plus three. Now x squared plus three, can we factor that? We can't factor that. And notice that x squared plus three, when is it not going to equal zero? Well, if we bring the negative three over, we'll have x squared cannot equal negative three. And notice that x squared is always not equal to negative three for any x value because x squared will always be a positive number. So notice that this just doesn't work out. So the domain for this one, there's no restrictions here. Basically the domain for this rational function is xcr. Because if you think about it, the denominator can never equal zero. X squared plus three will always be positive because X squared is either going to be greater than or equal to zero. It could be zero if X is zero, but then you'll have zero plus three, which would make it positive three in the denominator. Or X squared is gonna be greater than zero. It's gonna be some kind of positive number. A positive number plus three gives us a further positive number. So basically, the denominator can never equal zero. There's no restriction, so the domain is just x, er. x can be anything, right? So those are the answers. So remember, general format for the domain for a rational function, x, er, and then x cannot equal the restrictions. Then you list them out in order from lowest to highest. Sometimes you won't even have restrictions, like in this one. So x can just be anything.